minutes, and I'm very happy to um, take any questions. This is where the Centre for Work-Based Learning is based in the uh, University of Greenwich site at Chatham, just behind the dockyard. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Hugh. Um, looking at it as a ladder of progression, we've got intermediate apprenticeships, level two, advanced yeah. apprenticeship, level three, high apprenticeship, above that. To me, it's really important that we make sure that the links are made with those providers of all types that are delivering advanced apprenticeships so that they can provide information, advice, and guidance. They've already got the employer link, um, maybe been working with that employer for two to three years. They know the learner. They're perfectly placed to encourage their advanced apprentices to consider a higher apprenticeship when they might not have done before. Uh, how can we make sure that the, the HE bits of colleges are talking to the apprenticeship bits of colleges? And how can we make sure that we're talking to the independent providers that deliver 50% that we de that deliver 50% of the advanced apprentices? Because yeah. it's not just college delivery, it's about 50 Yeah. So if we don't talk to the independents, we miss half of the market. We do. To answer the first bit of your question about the, the, the two sides in colleges, and sometimes they're quite wide apart. Mm. Um, we, 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 we've deliberately targeted business development managers, workforce development managers in colleges, as well as the HE uh, managers in colleges, uh, and, and talk to them together about this. Um, and one of the things that we need to do is, is to build, help colleges build capacity to do this embedded in assessment, for example. That's bringing assessors from over here to the people who are delivering foundation degrees over here, who probably don't ever talk to each other, but together and, and learn from each other's practice about what the best best way of doing that is. Um, so that's that's I think what we need to be doing in colleges, and that's probably the easy bit. Private training providers, I think, um, are going to be more difficult because they're they're less likely to be getting a piece of this action. And private training providers need to be funded for what they do. So, um, unless unless the argument can be made that this is that, that this will help their retention and achievement of their advanced level apprentices by by having something else to aim at, um, and involving the employers in that discussion, then then it's it's more difficult. Having said that, we have. We, 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 we have started engaging with um, the associations of private training yeah. providers. And certainly with the engineering uh, apprenticeship, we had a major private provider um, who, was, who was involved in, in the whole project. Uh, that was when there was some funding there for them. <laughs> so it's, it, it is a tricky one, but you're dead right, it's, it's crucial. And can I suggest that with private providers, some form of collaboration they might be interested in? Yeah. Um, providers might be interested in having some sort of joint badging with the university. Yeah. Q involved in that. Yeah. And also if there could be some form of shared delivery, um, that also might be a way forward. Yeah. Uh, you're right, there's going to be something in it. Yeah. Mm. Good. Any further questions? Any further questions? Just a very quick one, just um, Ian talks about um, the prescriptive nature on this essay of setting up a higher apprenticeship. Um, and you talk about we've set up a higher or we're designing a higher apprenticeship in such and such. And just wanted to just say quickly a little something a little bit about um, there's technical certificates in there. As I understand it, it is possible to put or to apply to put a number of different qualifications as alternatives in that. So it could be the University of Greenwich Foundation of Business and Management, but potentially it could be others as well. Yeah. Talking about yes. local application elsewhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, it is. Um, we've been working with the CFA, and in their, in the, on their website, they've got um, a level four framework with an HNC as a technical certificate and an MDQ. Um, when, when our foundation degree is validated, with its MBQ embedded in it. We're working, by the way, with the Institute of Administrative Managers on, on that MBQ element. Um, we, 
we that will that will be CFA will look at it and say, yeah, that's fine because they've been working with us, so we we, we know that's okay. Um, but that, that doesn't mean to say that everybody in the country has to do the University of Greenwich Foundation degree. No, it's 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 just just one thing which will be um, available for, for for local delivery within our. So if one of the colleges around here was interested in this, they could potentially line up something they have. Yeah. yeah. Currently, it all has to go in the framework, though, um, in, in absolute detail. Yeah. And that's the, I think, one of the issues about the SACE. It was designed so central certification could take place of apprenticeships. So all the detail is in one document, and you know, uh, the idea is that somebody without much sector-specific knowledge could, could look at to see whether or not the components were there and tick, tick box nature and say, OK, we award you an apprenticeship. I think being so specific all the time about all of the qualifications and colours and sizes in the framework means the framework starts to grow until it becomes a document like War and Peace and, and becomes unwieldy. And, and from that point of view, I think in the old system was you could have any combination of, of competence, knowledge, requirement, and you can mix and match them much more flexible. But the new SACE requirements are, because of this central certification focus, is you will put down exactly what you're going to do. The numbers, the guided learning hours, the credit values, everything's got to be there. In there. And how you deliver it, on and off the job, all described. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important point. And, you know, I think one thing that we, we should all be very conscious of is any area that you're interested in working in to develop higher apprenticeships or investigating first point of contact is go go to the frameworks online and look up the detail in the document look up what's there doesn't mean that you can't then work with the appropriate sector skills councils and professional bodies to perhaps add in your own variant on that but be aware of, of what's there because that will guide how far you can take this. If you're going to come from kind of left field with some completely different approach on this, you've got to know from the beginning, maybe it's not going to be acceptable, or maybe it's going to be a big hill you're going to climb, or maybe this is just a slight variation on something that's already in there and listed. And they are wildly varying. Well, you know, within within the broad scheme of things, and you have got things from um, the the IT framework, which says a foundation degree in computing, to contact centre management, which goes the foundation degree in contact centre operations management at Staffordshire University. You yeah. know, okay, <laughs> right. So you know, quite quite different to other frameworks which don't even mention a foundation degree, but do list HNDs and, and HNCs. Sorry. Were there any final questions for, for Hugh? Right. Thank you very much, Hugh. That was a, that was a